Welcome to Electro Online. There's nothing like an example to help us understand what something is. So what we're going to do here is calculating the drift velocity through a conductor given the following parameters. The current through the conductor is 5 amps. We're using 12 gauge wire and for 12 gauge wire the diameter is 2.052 millimeters. And we have to know that the charge on a single charge inside a conductor would be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, which is of course the charge of an electron. We're using a copper conductor. The density of copper is 8,920 kilograms per cubic meter, and the molar mass for copper is 63.546 grams per mole. So here we have the equation that we found on the previous video that the current, which is equal to dQ dt, is equal to the number of carriers per unit volume, the charge on each carrier, the drift velocity, and the cross-sectional area of the wire. So if we solve that equation for the drift velocity, it is equal to the current divided by nQa. So what we have to do here is figure out what n is equal to. We know q, q would be the uh, charge on each carrier, and yes, there's only going to be one carrier per atom, because in copper, there's only one free electron that can move around. And then we have to calculate the cross-sectional area using the diameter of the wire here. So how do we find the number of carriers, the number of charges per cubic meter in a copper wire that are allowed to be moved when we have a potential difference across the wire? Well, that means we need to calculate the number of charges per mole and we multiply this times the number of moles per kilogram of copper and then we multiply this times the number of kilograms per cubic meter. Let's see if that will work. That should uh, reduce to number of charges per cubic meter. Notice that the moles cancel out, that the kilograms cancel out and indeed we get the number of charges per cubic meter. So let's figure out what that is equal to. N is going to be equal to the number of charges per mole. And so since there's one electron or one charge per atom, and a mole of atoms is Avogadro's number, there'll be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd charges per mole. Now we need to calculate the number of moles per kilogram. Since we know that we have a molar mass of this many grams per mole, and we know the density of copper, Hmm, we need to figure out how many moles there are per kilogram. So let's do that. So we have, there's a number of moles is equal to, uh, let's see here, that would be the mass divided by the molar mass. So in this case, the mass, we take one kilogram. And so that would be the number of moles per kilogram. We take one kilogram, and we divide it by the molar mass. We have to convert this into kilograms per mole. So in this case, that would be 0.063546 kilograms per mole. Notice that the kilograms cancel out and we end up with moles. So let's go ahead and figure out what we got here. So one divided by 0.063546. We probably have too many significant figures there. We'll round it off. So it'd be 15.74. 15.74 moles, and that would be the number of moles for a single kilogram. That would go in here, so 15.74 moles for every kilogram of copper. And finally, we need the number of kilograms per cubic meter. Now we have the density, which is defined as number of kilograms per cubic meter, so that goes in here, a density of 8,920 kilograms per cubic meter. So let's see here, the moles cancel out, the kilograms cancel out, and we're left with number of charges per cubic meter. And let's see what that is equal to. So end up with 6.02 e to the 23rd, that's Avogadro's number, times 15.74 moles of copper per kilogram, times 8,920, which is the density of copper, and we end up with 8.45 times 10 to the 28. So n equals 8.45 times 10 to the 28 charges per cubic meter. 
And so this is what it is for copper. Of course, different metals will have a different number of carriers per cubic meter. And now we're ready to calculate the drift velocity in this particular case. So we can say that the drift velocity, which is equal to the current divided by N times the charge per carrier times A is going to be equal to, we have a current of 5 amps, divided by the number of charges per cubic meter, which is right here, 8.45 times 10 to the 28. That would be charges per cubic meter. We're going to multiply that times the charge of each charge, which is 1.6 uh, well, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And then we have the cross-sectional area, which would be pi times r squared. Now, r would be half the diameter, so we have to divide that by 2. So we have, um, and then we have to convert that to meters, so it would be 0 0.001, and then 0 0.026 meters and then we have to square that. So that would be pi r squared for the cross-sectional area of our conductor. So that gives us 5 divided by 8.45 e to the 28, divided by 1.6 e to the 19 minus, and divide by pi, and divide by 0 0.001026 squared equals, and there it is, 1.12 basically, so that would be V sub D is equal to 1.12 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. When we convert that to millimeters, oh, that would be meters per second. I'm sorry, it's velocity. So this would be equal to 0 0.112 millimeters per second. Now let me quickly check that calculation again. So we have 5 divided by 8.45 e to the 28 divided by 1.6 e to the 19 minus, divide by pi, and divide by 0 0.001026 squared equals 1.12 times 10 to the minus 4. So it's about a tenth of a millimeter per second. So even though we have a current of 5 amps, which is a significant current through a very big wire, we still have a very, very, very slow velocity. So about 10 seconds to go a centimeter, about 100 seconds ago, 10 centimeters, 1,000 seconds. So we're talking about many minutes just to cover a distance of one meter in a wire. So you can see that drift velocity is actually a very small quantity. Charges are moving, they're bumping all around. Massive quantities of charges are moving, but they're moving at a very, very slow speed along the conductor, even though they're quite moving quite fast within the conductor itself. And that's what we mean by drift velocity.